There's a reason Joe Biden ran the way he did. There's a reason he's running for democracy now, because that's really what's at stake. You worried that it you is. can't pay your bill? Wait till he, the other guy becomes president, and you won't have to worry about it because you'll be in some camp somewhere. This video is brought to you by Tatum Plus, brought to you by Tatum Plus, a new platform. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is an incredible way to support uh, yours truly and our channel. We always want to be ahead of the game and making sure that if anything happened on these social media platforms, you still have a place where you can go and see content. And that costs money. So that's why we have a subscription base to help pay for everybody that's on the team, for them to cut unique content, for us to travel and do things that elevate our content and do more for you, right? We're gonna always do the free content. We're gonna always have it available on YouTube, but we wanna do additional things. And for those people who wanna go a little deeper into the experience with the Officer Tatum, you can do it on our subscription page. So go ahead and subscribe today. Link is in the description section. And we also have free shirts, $5 shirts, $5 hoodies on the Tatum store. Just click at the, but the button at the very top of the store and get you some merch today. Like, subscribe to the channel, y'all. You know, do let's get into this. I'm hoping that Donald Trump can, can get some good hearted people that can work for him and do well this time. Cause I don't know what happened last time, but it seems as if people were not supportive enough to help his agenda move forward. I mean, there had to be people that were, but by and large, it seems as if people were turning on him. There was a lot of turnover and all of those things are very difficult and not as conducive to do the best you can as the president. Right, Donald Trump has a couple more clips on here. Let me play clip five. How will you gather the several millions that have already entered our country illegally and return them to their country of origin? Great question. It's not sustainable for our country. We have millions and millions of people here. It is not sustainable. Did you see in New York City where they're getting the regular students out and they're putting migrants in their place? We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. We're bringing everybody back to where they came from. We have no choice. We have no choice. So clearly he didn't answer the question. I, I really wish, you know, let me let me say this. I know that people love Trump and I like Trump as well. But we do give him a pass sometimes when I think that we probably shouldn't. He didn't answer any part of that woman's question. She said, how are you going to? She didn't say, do you want to? She said, how are you going to? Put, I'm going to put together a deportation effort like the world has never seen. I'm paraphrasing. That's not a solution. That's not how are you going to do that. And, and I think he and others kind of owe it to us to think through this and say, well, what exactly are you going to do? I think there's a method to it. I think you can articulate that with a victory like mine, we, we, we will gain seats in the House and gain seats in the Senate. And, you know, I'm going to have conversation with Republicans and Democrats alike to propose a solution to undocumented people coming into this country and finding a solution to people who are not documented, who want to be here, and they come there the right, right way, how do we fix that? That The conversation will be had, and we're going to... You can say anything that sounds better than that. I mean, I think it's a good proposal to say we're going to fix the system because there are people that want to come here, which there are people that we would love to have here. But how about we fix the system, therefore we can make the system more efficient? Meaning that people don't have to sneak in here because we have an effective system that we can allow certain people in here through a vetting process in a quicker and more effective way. That's not bad to say. I'm going to get with Congress. And we all know that when a Republican president wins, I think we're going to gain some seats in the House and Senate and we'll have control over Congress. And we'll begin to move forward and in, in putting in, putting together a plan to deal with the people who are here, to deal with the people who want to come here and secure us from people we don't want here. And somehow, see, I just came up with this on the spot. I ain't been thinking about this. I'm not a politician. I'm not on a campaign trail. I'm not at a, at a town hall debate. You think this through and write it down so you can give us an actual answer. Instead of just saying, I'm going to have the biggest deportation. Man, the Democrats ain't going to do nothing with you when you get in office. Roll clip seven. So can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable? Well, of course that's right. And of course, I'm the one that had very little of it. Take a look at wars. Again, I didn't start. I wasn't involved in wars. We beat the hell out of ISIS. We won 100 percent. We brought our troops back home. Look at look at the violence that we've had. Look at the violence we have recently. Right, with but when you say bedlam, 
What do you mean? I think you say, it's bedlam. I think you look at Joe Biden, it's bedlam. You have a man who can't lead. You have a man who can't find his way off a stage after he makes a speech that lasts for about two minutes. Now, I think bedlam is Joe Biden. I think that he's using this. This is just a political ploy. Trump is a dictator. He wants to be a dictator. You know, it's interesting. I did a show, Sean Hannity. Did you ever hear of him? He's a very nice man. <laughs> and he said, essentially, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? Tell me. I think he was trying to give me a nicer question that maybe you guys would. He meant it very well. I said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day. We're going to do two things. The border, we're going to make it so tight you can't get in unless you come in legally. And the other is energy. We're going to drill, baby, drill. After that, I'm not going to be a dictator. After that, I'm not going to be a dictator. So, so you weren't press, saying no, that no, the And courts... the press picks it up. So I said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day. They cut it. They go, I'm going to be a dictator. But they cut the rest of the sentence. No, no. I am not going to be a dictator. I'm going to manage like we did. We were so successful that the country was coming together. It was actually coming together and coming together well. It was a beautiful thing to see, and we're going to do that again. Interesting, right? You, you see, I need to save that clip because the cackling hands on a view swear before our Lord and Savior that Donald Trump is going to be a dictator. It, it's, that's what that, I think. I think one of the dummies on there said it the other day. Donald Trump is going to be a dictator. And what's interesting for me is that. People's faith in the country is waning. Yes. That's, the, yes. that's the thing that's yes. pissing me off. Because, in fact, there's a reason Joe Biden ran the way he did. There's a reason he's running for democracy now. Because that's really what's at stake. You worried that it you is. can't pay your bill? Wait till he, the other guy becomes president, and you won't have to worry about it because you'll be in some camp somewhere. Because that's his promise. His promise to us is he's going to force people to do his bidding. That's what he said. I'm with this, I'm gonna be good on day one and I'm gonna turn into this other person. So here's the deal. This is all up to you. This is all up to you. We can sit up here till we're green in the face. But this really comes down to the people. What is the country you want? Do you want the country that you kind of thought you had, where we all get to say what we think and we don't have to be afraid of being American? And believing that, yeah, there will be people who come in and some will get in quick and some will take a different route, but they're coming here for a reason because they're living in a place that's not good for their families. If you're okay with that, you understand that, then fight for us to find a better way to make immigration work. Fight for that. Don't fight for keeping everybody out because then we all have to leave. I said a long time ago, it's impossible for a president to be a dictator. It, it, I, can, maybe somebody can find a way to explain that to me because Congress have, I think they have a lot more power than the president because they are elected officials to represent the people. That that's to me, that's more power than the president has. He can sign executive orders. He can't sign anything in the law in the Supreme court, even the way the Supreme court is established. I mean, if things are going to change, it's going to have to change through legislation. It's not going to be changing through executive power. And I, I don't get how a president can be a dictator. You know, I, Unless you think people are that stupid, you think somebody becomes a dictator and Congress goes along with it and the Supreme Court goes along with it and the FBI people who are working in the FBI goes along with it and the people in the DOJ and all these people just go along with a, with a newfound dictatorship in America. You can't replace the entire FBI. You can replace the FBI director, but the people of the FBI is not going to stand for a, direct, a dictator. That's like, what are we even saying? Hold the phone.